So finally, we're going to try and turn this one. It's a this will be the uh, cap for a bow for the Mistral rollerball pen. I'm just going to remount any burr and glue. So I've been practicing a little bit with the new tools from Blackline and I must say and I can show you in another small video I shot earlier I will add it after this um, don't forget the cushion that um, the worth is low there you go the finish these tools leave even with my lack of experience and expertise on these it's it's incredible i've i've tried some some uh, combined material blanks some soft woods and it's it's all well uh, well over 400 grit um going towards 600 and sometimes with the harder materials even 800 grit without any problems and despite my lack of experience with these things So I'm going to turn this and then afterwards we'll discuss some or I will mention some things that uh, have been going on. Although they seem short, this is the, the mini handle from Blackline. It's over there. It's it's really massive in weight. It's like um feels like at least half a kilo for the handle. But it's um it's well balanced, you know, even even though it's short and you can adjust the length of it. If you like some shorter grip or some more control, you can lengthen it. And either way, you know, once you get used to it, it's it's just it's a delight to turn with. I, I expected to have um, more trouble with the with the diameter of the handle, but it's actually really well. And it's um, compared to the tools I started with. When I start turning on my on my mini lathe, it's like these are tiny, and I actually tend to cramp over uh, these handles uh, on the mouse of the hand and then the ball of the hand, and this just gives a, a more relaxed grip. So I really like that. You can hold it like this. You can hold it like this. Whatever you prefer. You can hold it at the tail. It's, it's just perfect. switch over to the square insert this is the W insert this is a square cutter I hope you can see it well enough let me add some light so these are two of the f I think three or four profiles they have they also have a, a diamond shaped um, insert 
and I guess you could twist it 45 degrees as well and get the tip out instead of the surf uh, flat surface but I have to ask John and Bev exchanging is really simple this thing has parallel grips the the um, I'm gonna call it a grabber. I keep forgetting the correct term, but this thing has uh, parallel gripping. So even if you're like on the on the extreme of the um, shaft, it will still hold um, everything uh, over the length that you have it, and will keep it um, snug. <coughs> This is the other part of the pen that I already did using these tools and this is like one of the toughest combinations of materials I, I did out of the um, or except for the metal parts but this is like um, the mammoth tusk it's ebony then you have rose then you get walnut which is relatively soft compared to the rest another ebony another ebony the walnut goes through here, another segment of um, mammoth tusk, and then some more rosewood or rose. Um, and it gave a more equal um, takeoff, I guess, um, than I would get with a, with a normal skew chisel. Um, with the skew, um, you tend to go automatically tend to go deeper into the softer stuff or um, you know you get these 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 curved edges a curved profile and this is is more easier or easier to control for me um, at least might be just me but it's something I noticed So I'm going to finish off this one and then I will come back to you later um, and talk some more. So after turning with the chisels, I always take it back to 450, uh, sorry. 400 or 240 uh, to get rid of any deeper tool marks or scratches and then I take it back up to 600 grit Abranet stuff is great for, for sanding doesn't clog up and then I clean it out carefully After that is I have my own mix of um, some cold pressed linseed oil and just a little bit of beeswax unbleached uh, molten in there it's about I think 4% or something like that and then I just put that on there to make the grain pop before I add my finish or even if this is if this would be a natural finish pen I always use the cold press linseed oil first because it doesn't discolorate any of the lighter woods but still gives a nice depth uh, in the 
of the grain. I'm going to uh, burnish this a little bit. So now I'm going to apply the CA finish. And with double barrel pens, I always do the finishing uh, at once. So I get a even distribution of all the um, on all the parts. So I'm going to add this one as well. So I turned the camera off just for a little while because I needed to cut some fresh paper strips for applying the CA finish. Leave this to dry, soak into the wood and then I'm going to come back. So this is set well enough, soaked into the wood. And I'm going to apply my CA finish. It's just my method I developed over the last year. Um, I use Duribond um, CA glue. It's the only stuff that's like readily available in in my uh, area. I also have some uh, thicker CA from KGS and some ultra thin uh, CA also from KGS that I use for different types of segmenting or. Um, uh, soaking some some more porous um, material with the CA. Now the activator I use is also from KGS. <clears throat> it's available at a, at a craft store for me and I think it works well. It's strong enough and still um, flexible afterwards after it sets completely so it can take a drop on the floor. So I'm going to apply the CA and then uh, show you a few codes and then uh, switch off and uh, we'll talk later. Now make sure to give the material enough time to, uh, or the CA enough time to fully set, both on the towel as on the, as well as in the hem length. I usually do somewhere between 15 and 25 coats uh, of the thinner material. If there are large pores or any gaps or whatever, I um, do some more or even switch to the thicker uh, KGS glue um, just to get everything nice and, and evenly filled, get a flat surface. 
So I'm going to do, I think, 10 more codes at least, 15 codes maybe, uh, in this fashion. And then uh, you can, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I alternate the part of the pen I start with uh, if I uh, flip to a, um, switch to a um, <coughs> fresh piece of paper. Um, I do the um, cap end first and then the barrel and then I let it set, I switch to a fresh surface and then I do the barrel end first and then the cap. Um, There's just something because the paper towel soaks, soaks up a little bit of um, uh, glue and this um, makes sure that I don't get a larger build up on one part than on the other so just switches out and I polish it out you know as fast as I can evenly distributed small amounts and then um, let it set okay um, so in hindsight um, I've been using the tools on a couple of pens now and this I don't know it's, it's I think I shouldn't uh, be comparing it to the the high-speed steel tools any longer um, it's, a, it's a different take to the material it's a different approach it's more of a, a shear scraping technique um, but it's it's absolutely wonderful um, I'm going to do uh, the stone pens uh, later on the the shop that's supplying me the stone is selecting the the, the sp specific types of stone right now um, but I really love these tools it's firm it's sturdy it's affordable and the finish is just great like I mentioned before it leaves about a 400 grit finish and it minimizes the time you need to finish it afterwards with sanding and polishing and it might be only I don't know five minutes per pen you save but if you're going to do a lot of pens, it saves you a lot of time. It's been um, fun to learn them, to, to, to learn how to use them. It's been warm the last few days, um, so it took me a little bit longer to get everything done because of the CA that's um, setting too soon and stuff like that. But I really like these tools. Um, the the two proprietors of the of the company actually are very helpful. Um, we had uh, multiple conversations via messenger. Um, we had a short uh, ten minute phone call. Uh, I talked to John. Uh, John Bond is the owner of the of the Blackline Tool Company, and I think um, this is probably the most supportive and helpful um, tool supplier I have ever met. I think I mentioned it before, um, but for, for tooling, I've, I've never encountered something like this before. They're helpful, they're um, supportive, uh, they give you hints and suggestions how, on how to take on your material. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Just, just for the for the uh, surface they provide, I would say give it a try. And if you like good tools, then most definitely give it a try. The inserts are um, long lasting. These are the regular inserts. They take about two hundred hours, I think, or a hundred hours. I'm not sure about that, but uh, of turning. And considering I spent um, about ten hours of actual turning last week um, and I'm still not um, seeing any wear or dulling of the, of the tools even though I use brass on the one and uh, some high silica ebony um, on the other pen I, I didn't notice any dulling uh, whatsoever I'm going to do the stone pens in the short future I'm going to do some more brass and copper um, uh, segmented pens in the future and I will keep you updated on this and I think there's some more um, 
videos coming up in a short while on, on those subjects specifically. Um, I want to thank John and Bev Bond for uh, their support and um, their willingness to help. And um, I want to thank you all for watching and I hope you uh, subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you very much.